Good morning, everybody. Uh, I want to welcome everyone to this morning's virtual program uh, with Turnstile Tours. Uh, my name is Andrew Gustafson. I'm going to be your host today. Um, so I just want to welcome everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. We're going to go a little bit outside of our normal area of work, which is New York City today. Uh, and we're going to take a trip to Pittsburgh. We are going to be visiting, uh, virtually visiting, um, St. Nicholas um, Croatian Catholic Church uh, in Millville, Pennsylvania, which is uh, right outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, and we're going to be speaking to Anna Daring. Um, I should just give a little bit of background, kind of how we got connected with this place. Um, as all of you know, uh, we lead tours in partnership with different nonprofit organizations, and all the tour programs that we operate um, are in New York City. Um, however, you know, over the years, uh, we've learned a lot, gained a lot of expertise uh, in developing and operating programs. Um, and so we want to work with as many organizations as possible and really fulfill our mission, which is to help nonprofit organizations build capacity for welcoming the public. Uh, and so as a result of that, we created another branch of our business, which is called Turnstile Studio. Um, and so we do consulting with organizations all over the world. We've worked in Singapore and Florida uh, and places all over New York City um, where we're kind of working more behind the scenes and doing things like training, content development. Um, and in the case of this, we, we got the opportunity to work with uh, this organization um, to help develop their interpretive plan, which is a project that's going on uh, right now as we speak. Uh, so this is a year long project and we're, we're so honored um, to be able to work with this great organization, this really, really amazing site. Um, so in just a moment, I'm gonna bring on our guest, uh, Anna Daring, who is the Managing Director of the Society to Preserve the Millville Murals of Maxo Vanka. I think I got that right. Um, so I'm gonna bring you on here in uh, just a moment, uh, Anna. Good morning. Morning, Andrew. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Greetings Good. from Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah, how are things out there? How's the weather there? It's rainy. It's rainy, yeah. uh, but uh, I'm really great. It seems like it's really sunny right here, so that's all I have to worry yeah. about right now. Yeah, and I'll say it's the weather is miserable here, so I, I just want to give everyone the caveat that we're all new to this and we're all relying on relatively new technology, so hopefully everyone's internet connection will will be stable with this weather, but just, just bear with us uh, as, as we go along. Um, yeah, so, so Anna, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, a, a little bit about the, the society and the project? Sure, sure. So um, my name's Anna Deering. I'm the managing director of the Society to Preserve. You got it right, Andrew, and okay. I'm not going to go through it again. I'm just going to say the Society or Vanka murals from here on in. Um, I've been working on the project for about 10 years. Uh, I'm a fundraising consultant and uh, uh, since 2016 been the managing director of the society. And uh, the organization is an independent nonprofit uh, working in partnership with the St. Nicholas congregation and the church. We've been around since 1991 and um, sort of uh, just like the partnership today, the society really formed out of a combination between community engagement, community um, people and the congregation really focused on the fact that if they were going to preserve the murals, they really needed to be working outside the inside and outside the congregation. So they brought the two together. And so, yeah, so, um, yeah, so, so you're a non sectarian independent nonprofit, but the site that you're interpreting and preserving is all within a working Catholic church. Absolutely, St. Nicholas has been in operation constantly since 1900 as a, as a parish. Um, and uh, they do have, uh, still have mass in the church. And we, um, we so we, we kind of, uh, the best way to think about it, I think, is that they use and take care of the building and we take care of the murals uh, is a lot of the way. The, the mission of the, uh, the short version of the mission of the society is to save and share the Vanka murals uh, with the community, which is just really reflective of uh, Father Jagar's intention of the murals when they were painted. Yeah, so Father Jagar is a figure we're going to talk about, but why don't we dive in and the best way to understand the murals is to see them. So uh, you, you have some slides you're going to share with us. 
I do, and I, I, I say right now, I think as we've talked about, there, there are stories within stories within stories related to these murals and, and lots of things that we can look at. I am going to really just give you sort of probably the briefest introduction to a lot of those uh, things and, and hopefully we'll have time at the end to talk about um, what we're doing now and, and how we fulfill our mission today. So Yeah, sorry. and the regular tour that you do of the murals is, is an hour. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. On paper, yeah. it's an hour. It usually goes a bit longer, but you could spend, you you could spend all day. You can spend a lifetime with these murals and and not see everything. So we're really just going to scratch the surface today. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, you can go to the next slide. Uh, well, actually, I'll just say this is that is Saint Nicholas Church and Max Ovanka, the artist. And if you go to the next slide, I put this uh, this quote up because uh, it's a quote from Mary Thomas, who's a writer here in, Post in Pittsburgh. And she wrote this comparing the Vanka murals to Matisse's Rosary Chapel in France and Mark, Mark Rothko's chap chapel in Texas. And so it really speaks, if you go to the next slide, Andrew. Um, oh, sorry, when I see it, I'm seeing something else, hold on, okay. Um, it really speaks to the fact that, um, you know, Vanka was creating, I'm sorry, go back, Andrew. Um, Vanka was creating in place at, you know, in a specific site and time, um, 1937, but it was also meant to be a unit, we, we refer to it as universal and timeless, um, these murals. Vanka referred to the murals as his gift to America. And um, that really reflects his and, the, and Father Jagar's intention, as I said before, for the murals to go beyond the church. I think it was also meant to be an immigrant's thank you to his adopted homeland. And um, I think it was also a challenge to his adopted homeland to, to realize its potential. So as we go through, you'll kind of get a better sense of, of what I mean by that. Next slide, Andy. Yeah. So um, what you see here, as I said, um, part of the part of the you know knowing the history of this is to know that there were between thirty and fifty thousand Croatians living in Pittsburgh, estimated to be living in Pittsburgh. That's a big span, but that's the estimate supporting the mills and the mines um, and the growth of Pittsburgh around the turn of the century. So there was a one Croatian. Uh, parish formed right before the turn of the century, and then by 1900, right before, they had split into two churches, and they were really only less than about a mile or so away from each other, but you had these two parishes be established right around 1900. And in this picture on the left is the original um, structure of, uh, that was dedicated in 1900, and um, really what happened in 1921 is that the fire, there was an interior burn in the, in the church that destroyed the, the ceiling and made it, the the, it made it necessary to rebuild the entire interior of the church and the, and the roof. And they actually altered the design of the roof that kind of helped to create um, a, a nice uh, canvas for Vanka. But it was rededicated in 1922, um, same architect was involved. And um, this is what basically though, if you go to the next slide, Andrew, you'll see, um, the, uh, you'll see the interior, the destruction in the interior. And as you can see, sort of at the, at the back, there were, you can see the ghost images of previous murals, which were really pretty traditional church murals. But what happened is that once they reconstructed it, they painted the walls white, and uh, you can go to and and this uh, really uh, created was there and it existed from 1922 until Vanka started painting in 1937. Uh, what this picture represents is um, in the middle there, the small man in the middle is Albert Jagar, Father Albert Jagar. And Father Jagar emigrated to the United States around 1927. He was originally assigned to the other St. Nicholas Church, but then he was assigned to uh, St. Nicholas Millvale to help to relieve the, the debt of the parish and uh, to be its priest. So he came to St. Nicholas Church around uh, later in the, in the 20s. 
started to relieve the help to raise money and relieve the debt on the church. And by 1935, he was starting to be in a position to think about um, decorating the interior of the church and, and putting his mind to that. And so that kind of gets you to a point where uh, the church is ready to paint uh, or to do something. So now I'm going to go back and just bring Vanka to that point as well. So if you can go to the next uh, slide, Andrew. So Moxo Vanka and um, Mary Thomas also talks about there being a little bit of a fairy tale type uh, uh, appeal to this story. But Moxo Vanka was um, born in 1889. He was uh, the illegitimate son of Austro-Hungarian royalty. And at that time, the way that they handled, if, if the family was of means and they handled it this way, they would, they would take the child and, and place the child with a peasant family. Um, so there was like a fostering uh, mother. And in the top row of pictures, you, you obviously va see Vanka as a small child, as a baby. Then you see him with his nurse or his, his adopted mother, um, Dora. And then you see him as he, he's growing a little older. Um, by the time Vanka was eight years old, his uh, maternal family brought him back to Zagreb, brought him back into privilege to be educated. And so Vanka started having, you know, the best tutors, the best teachers going to art school. Um, you see a picture here of him at, in, um, in Belgium, actually. He went there to complete his art study because there wasn't um, an advanced study opportunity in Zagreb at the time. And so he finished his degree uh, close to 1914, so close to the start of the First World War, and he ended up serving as a volunteer ambulance driver in the First World War. Um, he did that for a year, and that's important in part because you'll see um, in the paintings that he used that um, as, as sort of um, inspiration or as, as um, sort of his, his mind's eye kind of thinking about his experience there. To the right, the larger picture, you see uh, depicted how Vanka was making his living in Zagreb at the time. He was establishing himself as an artist. He was teaching at the academy, but he was also doing portraiture. And because of his family's connections, he was able to um, get commissions to do the paintings of local officials, other dignitaries. And so he was, he was established, he was happy, he was working through the, through the 20s. And in the late 20s, he um, met an American woman. Uh, next slide, Andrew. Um, he met an American woman named Margaret Stetton. Margaret actually is from, your, uh, from New York City. Her father was a uh, prominent surgeon in Manhattan back uh, at, in this time. And she was, for all intents and purposes, sort of on her European tour. And she meets Vanka uh, toward the end of the 20s. And they uh, eventually marry, um, settle in Zagreb, and have their first and only daughter, Peggy, um, in the early 30s. But uh, as things started to change in Europe um, right, uh, and, and the fact that Margaret was a Jewish woman, uh, they decided for that reason and for the reason that uh, Margaret felt that you know, America was really had some promise for Vanka in terms of his career. So they actually uh, decided to leave Zagreb in 1934 and they moved to Manhattan. Uh, so they are in your neighborhood um, Andrew and Cindy living in um, a very nice place in Manhattan, so not Brooklyn, but Manhattan. Um, and Vanka, interestingly, puts his studio in the Bowery. And this really comes, to, is really sort of a statement about Vanka and, and his work. He, he wanted to be out on the streets. He was restless. He would go out and he would sketch and draw and sketch and draw just constantly, but always wanting to kind of tell the story of what he was seeing on the streets. He wanted to paint um, the stories of the people. And um, it's often said that he had this uncommon regard for the common man, but um, it really, uh, 
sort of was was how he spent his time just walking the streets of New York. And um, we recently um, were gifted by the family a um, gift of uh, art of of art work on paper. That and in doing so, in looking at that collection and what was coming to us, I was able to see a lot of his work from New York at the time, and um, he really just captured that sort of the 1930s, the depression, what was what was on the streets. Probably a lot of recognizable images to folks from New York. Uh, but so that really. Um, next slide, Andrew. Um, in 1935, uh, he ended up coming to Pittsburgh, and. Part of this was, I think, A, I think he was restless um, and wanted to get out and, and see what else was happening in the United States. He ended up uh, traveling around the uh, industrial centers of America with Louis Adamic, a writer at the time, also a Croatian immigrant. And they were stopping to see what was happening to the worker. They wanted to tell the immigrant story and, and what this progress in the United States was costing immigrants. Uh, so they were stopping all around the country. And um, Adamic literally dropped Vanka in Pittsburgh one day. Um, and Vanka ended up spending about 10 days or two weeks here in the city just walking around. Um, next picture. Um, and, and actually, yeah, in this picture, you can see, in that previous picture, you see, if you're familiar with Pittsburgh at all at this time, um, they, you know that's probably a bright daytime image. Uh, the mills are working. It's smoggy. Um, and if you go to the next slide, you have a picture that Vanka sketched um, down by the river. Um, and these, we, we have a number of these sketches from this 1935 visit. And toward the end of this visit, Vanka was asked to put on a one man show. So he actually um, staged a one man show of his, of his works. Uh, and we believe that this is where Father Jagar ultimately, even though he didn't meet Vanka personally at, in 1935, he, he, we believe that's where he saw his work. And so he felt that his depictions of his storytelling through his art was really what attracted Jagar. And Jagar felt that this could be the man who would paint the interior of St. Nicholas Church. So... S yes. Sorry, and this one man show, this was at the, the consulate of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, is that right? No, it was actually, it was in Westerly Gallery in Oakland, um, which was near the Carnegie Museum of Art um, at that time. So uh, in Oak, but it was, Andrew, you're right, it was invited, he was invited by the consul to do this show. Mm -hmm. um, next slide. So I, what I wanted to do, though, too, was just um, a lot of times people want to categorize Vanka as a WPA muralist, um, which he wasn't. Um, and when he came to Pittsburgh uh, in 1935, as Sylvia, Dr. Rohr notices or mentions, there, was, there were a number of murals here in the city and, and quite provocative murals as well. So I just put up a couple of them to um, show you. Um, if you can go to the next slide, Andrew. So on the left is the crowning of labor, and that's John White Alexander's um, three-story mural that's in the Carnegie Museum of Art. And that was painted um, in the earlier 20th century before around 1910, I believe. And then the one to the right is um, Boardman, may I get the right, Boardman Robinson's um, History of Commerce mural that was commissioned by the Kaufman department store, the Kaufman family. Um, many of you would be familiar with their um, commission of Falling Water, um, the um, Frank Lloyd Wright um, house uh, near Pittsburgh. Next one, Andrew. Um, this, the next ones on the left are, I, I, I think are just wonderful. They, um, these are in the courthouses downtown. Um, the one on the left is um, by um, Van Veen and it's called Pittsburgh Panorama. And if you um, look closely, you can see that he's formed the three rivers here into a hammer and sickle, um, rather, um, rather fun. And then on the right is Justice um, by Vincent Nesbert. And these are both, these were in place in the, they were being done at the same time as when Vanka was here in 35. So, so he's joining still that kind of storytelling. He's joining um, this, this rich tradition. 
Uh, so but he wasn't in any way, sorry, just to clarify for folks who aren't familiar about WPA, so he, he wasn't involved in any way in the Works Progress Administration right, project. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. Mm -hmm. um, so this is probably one of my favorite um, pictures of Father Albert Jagar and Vanka. Uh, essentially what happened is, is Father Jagar got in touch with Vanka in New York, invited him to come to Pittsburgh to see the church, to see if he could paint it. Um, a little backstory on, uh, additional backstory on Vanka, he had never done murals anywhere <laughs> uh, before, so this was a new thing. Um, and he came to the church and if you remember that interior view of the, uh, you know, or that, that idea that it was, it was completely white and it was the entire interior of the church, um, he came and, and um, kind of looked around and said, yeah, I can do this, you know, sure, um, sounds good. I will come back in April. Um, he came back in April of 1937. He had instructed them about how to, um, you know, put the murals, to, how to put the scaffolding together, what he'd need for supplies. Again, just for those um, wondering, if you go to the next slide, Andrew. But, um, this is, this, uh, you can go to the next, this was just uh, Father Jagar sort of confirming that what he really wanted to do was, um, you know, tell the story of the people and, uh, and beautify the church. I think um, Jagar, as I, said before ultimately had a, a much bigger idea. He wanted these to be enjoyed around the world by people are from around the world. Uh, those two figures look kind of similar. Yeah, yes, exactly, yes. Um, <laughs> and it's really interesting, Andrew. Um, uh, Vanka did not, a lot of Vanka's images in the murals are very sort of representative. He, he wasn't painting portraits throughout the murals. But I will be able to point out to you a few places where he um, broke that rule, and you'll see some familiar faces in the murals. So the next one. So um, as I said, he came in April. Um, uh, the, the plaster, remember, was long dry, just as that, as uh, if people are asking about, um, thinking about fresco or not. Um, go to the next slide, Andrew. And Vanka was very good. Um, he, he, in correspondence, he constantly drew pictures and sketches for his family at home. So I, I put here on the left, Vanka's arrival in Millvale on the left, and he's showing you St. Nicholas Church and a little bit of the river and, and everything where he's going. And then on the right, you have a, a, a picture from a uh, very recent picture of the church today in Millvale. And there's some, there's some, uh, and what I, I put these, I put these pictures in here because it's very hard to um, sort of put the murals in context. So this is a, an image from the choir loft, um, and it gives you a really good sense of how the murals are placed within the church, but also the scale of the murals. So uh, as you see that main altar, in, uh, the main altar there, that ultimately is about a three-story high mural there. Um, next slide, Andrew. Oh, and just while we're, while we're on this slide, yeah. uh, Anna, so could you tell us, you know, about the scale, you know, basic, so basically everything that people are seeing in here was, was painted by Max Ivanka, everything on the walls and the ceiling. Yes. So, yes, thanks, Andrew. This, it's really uh, kind of also awe-inspiring to remember that he painted alone uh, he painted from about 9 a.m. in the morning to 3 a.m. at night or in, to early in the morning, six days a week. He took Sundays off so the church could have mass and he wasn't in the, in the midst. Um, again, you know, when you see, when we we're able to show a few more pictures of the interior, you'll get a sense of what it meant to be on the scaffold in this, uh, in this church. And, um, and the fact, and that, this is, a, this is another one that gives you a view from the altar looking back. And so the other interesting thing is just to note that Vanka for the most part used and was given every inch of the walls of the church to paint. Um, the other thing that he was told by Father Jagar was that he, you know, he, he really had, um, he, he said everything, and, and this is, this has been validated, he really did say everything around the front near the altars, surrounding the altars, should be religious, but everything else is really yours to paint as you wish. Um, Vanka was given a very free hand, 
but um, it's important to remember that he was, um, you know, raised in a in a Catholic tradition. This is a Roman Catholic church. He was he was raised in a Catholic tradition. He was steeped in Croatian ethnography. So he's um, we've had um, folklorists and other people come in and just really commend his representation of of Croatian imagery here. And um, so uh, that and yes, this is this is fun. Um, and if you think about the reaches, uh, again, with the scaffolding and stuff, Vanka kind of gives a sense of how he was painting, uh, tongue in cheek a little bit, but maybe not so much um, how he was painting. You go to the next one. So um, this is a really, um, and I, I, I put a little blue arrow there just to give you a sense of the scale as Andrew was asking. Um, most of the murals, uh, some of the smallest murals are 100 square feet. Um, this mural, the mural where Vanka is being shown on the scaffolding there, is, um, is a three-story mural, as I said. First mural that he painted. And we'll go to the next one to show you sort of the progression of that, of that mural. And in terms of size, like, this is pretty close in square footage to, of work done by one person to, like, the Sistine Chapel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's 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 the scale that we're talking about here all all done by one person so this mural and we can go uh, we'll go this this mural the the center figure is obviously mary and this is mary queen of croatians there's actually a banner over the top of the uh, main altar mural that says mary queen of croats pray for us and then, and then the next two slides show two smaller murals that are also in um, this on this same main altarpiece. This is called Croatia. This is called the Angelus or Croatians in the Old World. And the next one, and you can see the um, two figures to the left will be repeated in the next one. If you go to the next one, Andrew, is called Croatians in America. And we're back again to that picture of Father Jagar. We're also seeing two of those two male figures repeated here in the new world in their new world clothes um, among being part of the working group that's being asked uh, that Father Jagar is asking Mary to bless the church. And this is um, representative of the parish. And this main altar mural really sets up a number of themes that continue through the murals. This, the comparatives, um, in this case, old world, new world, uh, the preeminence of women and Mary, uh, and you'll see that in other places, the, the citing the murals in Pittsburgh. So we'll be able to see that in other places as well. Um, and again, this is one place where he painted a portrait of, of Father Jagar. Um, he also painted a portrait, his daughter Peggy is the face of Christ in this, in this mural. Um, and of course, as always happens, once paintings live in a church for a long time, um, we often have people tell us that it was their family members who were painted in, um, in the pictures, but um, we have, we're, we're not been able to sort of uh, prove that, uh, you know, without a shadow of a doubt. So, uh, but we know Jagar for sure. Um, and before we leave that one, um, I just wanted to, to give you a sense, go back to what Andrew is kind of giving you a sense of the timing and everything and scale. Vanka started with that mural and it took him one week to paint it. So it took him one week and that really set the pace for the next, um, for the series. So um, the next two murals um, are um, on the left, obviously the crucifixion and on the right, the Pieta. And these two murals um, sit behind the side altars on the church. So to, they're flanking Mary in the church. And um, they also, um, and, and both of these murals, uh, not Mary, but both of these murals have been completely conserved and have um, new dedicated lighting on them. And we'll talk more later on about the conservation and the lighting process too, yes. if people are curious. Mm -hmm. So the next murals are um, the uh, the next murals are the evangelists, and and I'm working just through the 1937 cycle. The the this picture from the choir loft gives you a sense of where the evangelists are placed. So they're in the barrels or the arches um, up above. And if you go to the next um, slide, uh, you have a good idea of what Vanka was doing. Um, 
uh, the picture, he's really sitting on a plank of wood painting up in that barrel um, of, this is Matthew. And then the next slides show the actual um, murals themselves. So you have Matthew, Mark, and each evangelist is painted with their symbol. Uh, and almost like an iconic painting, that is a metallic finish behind their heads and bodies uh, and the symbols. Can you go to the second one? So Matthew, Mark, then Luke, and John. And uh, so they're split on the, on the two sides of the, of the church. So finally, um, the last two murals of the 1937 series are really um, indications of where Vonk is going in the 1941 cycle because he's really starting to, to make comment on what's happening in society and the world at the time. Uh, this mural, which it's also important, it's also an opportunity to think about where Vonka placed the murals uh, in the church, the, the installation of them. This mural is called uh, Croatian Mother Raises Her Son for War. And it's based on a canvas that he painted in 1915. It's again supposed to depict a, a real life story of a, of a um, soldier who made his way back to his village and died. Um, the women sitting there are not nuns. They are uh, Croatian women grieving in the old world. This is traditional uh, mourning attire. And the mother is depicted by the sash around her breast. And that, um, this image um, will also kind of come back into play in a 1941 mural. But really, um, if you could see, if you can see the detail on the image, it's an endless field or what feels like an endless field of crosses um, the cost of war, again, women grieving and bearing, um, bearing the sorrow of, of the loss. And um, if you go to the next slide, uh, it shows that, and this is on the other side of the church, and this, uh, I'm sorry, this is, <laughs> this is the next slide or the next painting in process. Um, immigrant mother raises her son for American industry. It's part of the sketch, the process sketch on the left and then Vanka painting on the right. And then if we go to the next one, we have the, the, the mural itself. So this is Immigrant Mother Raises Her Son for American Industry. Um, it's it's um, you know, across the church at the same, on the same back walls from Croatian Mother. It's facing the crucifixion. Uh, you have women grieving in New World clothing, so the dark, um, the dark um, attire. And this, like the Croatian uh, and war, Mothers in War, this is based on a real life story of a, of a mining accident where a mother actually ends up losing four sons in one mining accident. And this is one of those murals that we absolutely know the name of the mural because it's written in Croatian on the newspaper that the um, body is lying on. And Andrew, I don't know if you can, um, if it's really easy to see, but there is um, a un a dark square in the right that you might be able to point to on the right side that people might be able to see the conservation, but I'm not sure if that's really visible. Let's see here. On that Did handkerchief up on that side, might not be too visible. Yep. But, but this is a, both of those murals, um, all of the murals that I, we just went through are in the 1937 series. Um, it's a, we count that as a total of um, 11 murals because of the two smaller murals in Mary. And those, um, this is where we get to do the guess what, guess what um, with, the, with the audiences at the tours. But I'll just uh, suspend the, I'll you know, erase the suspense and tell you it was eight weeks that Vanka painted those 11 murals. So he was, he was painting by himself. He was painting one mural every four to five days. And um, he also painted the borders in the church, which kind of um, you can see in the ceiling murals and down the walls that would sort of be the frames for the next round of, of murals. So those, that is the 1937 cycle. And again, with these two last murals being the last two and really sort of the um, preview for what was to come. And um, Vanka leaves, Millvale in, in June, um, and he met Father Jagar's deadline. They had a big party, a great picnic, um, and celebrated the murals. And next slide, Andrew. 
The murals were also recognized nationally. So Time Magazine came and captured the murals and um, great praise for, for their completion. And again, this was halfway um, to the completion of the, of the murals. So Vanka leaves, um, leaves uh, Millvale, he goes back to New York, and then actually right before he came back to Pittsburgh, he moved his family to where the family lives today, which is in Bucks County near Doylestown, Pennsylvania, um, on a, in a place called Whitebridge Farm. And it was an 18th century farmhouse. Um, he built his, a barn there. There's a barn where his studio still remains. And he came back. Um, so the family gets set up. He comes back in 1941. War is raging in Europe and actually in his homeland. And this is one of the first murals. It's called, uh, it's the Old Testament, and it's on the upper walls of the, of the mural of the church and the sanctuary. And um, you can see uh, the hand of God um, delivering the tablets to Moses. On, on that tablet in Croatian is written, thou shalt not kill. And you have the, the golden calf, uh, the story of the golden calf um, on the right. Now, again, keeping in mind installation and, and placement, um, we go to the next two murals. And these are right below, these are, come right below Moses and right below the golden calf story. And on the left, you have Prudence. And in this context, Prudence is meant to be a, a caution to the congregation. You're immigrants, you're in a new world. Um, be careful what you say, you can be judged by what you say. And on the right is Mati 1941. And if you think about Croatian mother and war, you see the, the woman um, sort of in grieving. And this is, this is mother Croatia on the cross. She can't help her people. And um, there is, um, and then on the, and then this faces, go ahead, Andrew. This faces the New Testament wall on the other side where you have Peter receiving the keys to the kingdom, the eye of God, um, Christ indicating his flock on the right side, and behind Peter, um, Archangel Michael striking down what looks like a devil figure, and that comes down to the next two murals, which are probably two of the more recognizable murals that we have in the church. The one on the left is called Injustice, or Justice Corrupted, and the one on the right is called Justice. And just a couple of things about these um, that are obvious comparatives. Um, the unbalanced and the balanced scales. Um, the, um, while the injustice holds a bloody sword, um, we see that justice has the light of knowledge and uh, the lamp with these flames of knowledge. Um, and the th one of the things that really, two things about injustice, two more things about injustice. One is that um, even through his sketches, Vanka always hooded this figure and we think that that was an intention to be able to make it timeless, that injustice was eternal um, or, um, and that it needed, it could take any form or any, any embodied by, be embodied by anyone. Um, the other thing is that injustice sits firmly on the ground. She's actually standing on people if you get close, whereas justice is, is sort of floating above the earth and um, more ethereal. And if you think again about placement, injustice is, is flanking immigrant mother raises her son for American industry. She's also facing um, mother Croatia. So there, you know, there is the implication that um, Ivanka was painting mother America here, um, but we're not sure. That's, a, that's one interpretation. So we're getting close to the, the last few, um, and believe it or not, some of the more dramatic murals of the 41 series, if we go to the next ones. Um, these are under the choir loft, so very much Michelangelo style. Um, this is uh, Mary on the battlefield. Uh, again, Vanka painting from his experience on being the ambulance driver. Um, this is not your typical Mary, <laughs> to say the least. And, and just a note, this is a 325 square foot mural. Uh, so it's very big. And um, Mary's breaking a, a rifle. She's um, looking obviously in horror at what she's experiencing. And next to, and these are Christian soldiers. They're, they all have some insignia indicating that they are Christian. And if you go to the next slide, 
um, on the other side, you have Christ on the battlefield. And um, in this scene, the soldier is injuring Christ exactly in the same place you'll see the injury on the other soldier. Christ is wearing a um, crown of barbed wire. And um, these murals, just to, to talk from it, these murals are the latest ones that we conserved. We believe Vanka probably um, painted them in you know, less than two weeks. It took us a year to conserve um, both of these murals. And the next two um, are, again, a comparative. You have the simple family meal, meal here where you have a, a pretty traditional immigrant meal happening. Christ is at this table. And um, you can see the mills in the background. This is one where he broke the rules and he's got two um, people we know in this, in this mural. Um, the man cutting the bread was the Burgess of Millvale or the mayor of Millvale at the time, a Lutheran. Um, so a little scandalous there. Um, and then the little girl raising her arm to the table is his daughter Peggy again um, there. Now this mural faces the next mural which is really, which is really sort of symbolic for Pittsburgh. This is called the capitalist. So in contrast to the meal across the way, you have a very sumptuous table, but there's only one person at it. And this man is ignoring the man begging uh, at his table. He's ignoring the man serving him, the African-American. The, the angel is shunning him. And I take those shadows behind the capitalist to be his soul sort of edging toward um, a, you know, a, a hell, basically. Um, this, so that, and it says stocks 1941 on that um, paper. Uh, people often ask us if this depicts any specific uh, capitalist, and, and we usually reply, we're in Pittsburgh, take your pick. Um, uh, but uh, for everything we've been able to figure out, there was no intended um, one person for this image. The last um, murals that he painted uh, during 41 included this one, and this is a flank on the right side of the altar mural. And I, I'm just showing you this on the half of the apostles are on one side and the other half on this side. The blue arrow points to Vanka. Uh, he painted himself into the mural here. And then this is part of the larger ceiling mural. Um, and it's the final mural, one of the final murals. This is called Transcendent Vision. And um, we are, um, we have tons of angels in the church, um, angels everywhere. But um, you have here, um, you can see a sampling of them, of course, Christ rising and descending. Um, the um, angels on the left side, there are four angels in this mural that you can't see. You can sort of see their wings coming to the middle. One plays a harp, one plays a gusla, a Croatian instrument. So there's a lot of, um, and there's a lot of celestial images in this. Um, some people often say it reminds them of a Blake uh, painting. But, um, and then at the back um, where Christ is descending, there is a mural of St. Francis and a mural of St. Clair. So he, this is, that is the 1941 conservate, the 41 series, and that one took him a little longer, about 14 to 16 weeks, um, but he did complete it again by himself. And just to get to where we are right now, I can go through these pretty quickly. Um, we are in the midst of um, conservation. We've completed 12 of these murals, and we have an all-female conservation team. And if you go to the next, I just provided you with a, um, a really good before after image of, of the crucifixion to show you the dirt that we're kind of combating, if you go to the next one. Um, so this is, these are before and after images that um, came out of the, off the crucifixion. And if you think about Pittsburgh and the air, right now the church is not climate controlled. So there has been about 80 years of dirt, uh, Pittsburgh dirt coming in through the windows that are open um, nine months out of the year. But we don't do just cleaning. There's a weather side of the church and the weather side of the church produced a real problem for us, which was water damage. Uh, if you go to the next slide, um, this was the Pieta. And um, what essentially happens is that um, water permeates the plaster bubbles up on the surface and destabilizes the plaster. And then the paint flakes off and the surface flakes off. 
Um, there had, and, and so in 2009, we started the work on this. this is very much state of the art conservation. Um, we, the best way to say it is that we turn the unhealthy plaster back to healthy plaster and retouch as needed. Um, but it's not as simple as that. It's a very elegant solution to a problem. Um, it involves nanoparticles being, um, containing a barium solution being injected into the surface of the mural and restabilizing the plaster. And, and I can direct you to a lot more information about that if you're interested in, in the details. Um, but um, we have uh, this concern on at least half of the murals because they are on a, on a weather side of the church. And the murals, um, no matter what you do, are the path of least resistance for any water um, that happens to get into the church. Um, so, um, it, but the church, uh, the congregation is very much, um, takes very good care of the building and we, we don't see any active. We're just remediating a problem that um, is there right now or has been in the, in the, the water has been in the murals. Um, this is the, the battlefield scenes that I was talking about. Um, under the choir loft, we have an environmental challenge, which is dryness. And so in, in contrast to the ones on the other side of the church, we have a flaking paint situation. And in this case, the, the conservators um, would be using everything, kitten, uh, everything in their toolbox, the cleaning as well as the nanoparticles to restabilize um, this, this surface. And um, the cleaning, I should say, is not just an easy thing. It is, um, this is water soluble paint, Vanka painted with a water-based paint. And so, they have a solution where it's a very delicate rolling of swabs over the surface to pull dirt until you think you're pulling paint and then you stop. <laughs> but um, so it's not a, a and it takes about three hours to do one square foot of any mural. So um, that just gives you a sense of the time involved. And he painted a mural right in, in English and Croatian that says do not wash. Oh. Uh, behind the altar in Croatian and in English, it says, do not wash, yes. <laughs> because Croatian women are known for their washing ability there. Um, the, the truly transformational thing that we've been able to do, and again, the society's uh, mission has been to fund all of the cleaning, the restoration, the lighting, um, and also the public promotion. But the lighting that you're seeing um, here is state-of-the-art LED um, directed lighting. It's now we have dedicated lighting on all of the conserved murals. And if you go to the next um, slide, um, you can see where Clear Story, the, the um, company that did this for us, they're Pittsburgh based, they really incorporate, they tried to make, you know, incorporate the lighting into architectural elements. So it's not really visible where things are being lit from. So you have that wash light on immigrant or on immigrant mother on the left side, but then in the middle, we're showing you where we've hidden the light that focuses on injustice. And on the right, you're seeing the impact of lighting where it almost looks like it glows. And that's really the idea when it goes from you know, not being lit to, to being lit. It's, it's almost like it glows. And we've had a number of people um, after we've done with the tour, they go and they stand behind, right next to the mural and they keep trying to see behind it to see if we've got lights hidden back there because they can't figure out what we've done with it. Um, but these are, these are learning lights that adapt to the light coming in from outside. And um, like with the conservation, we're in the process of assessing what we've done so far and um, when we go to do the other half of the murals, if there's any way for us to improve the technology or do a better job of lighting them. But until 2016, these murals were not able to be seen without, they were seen by flashlight or by the portable theater lights, which we still use in part today. So we have another half to go, but um, th this light just enhances the viewing. It also makes it so e much easier to see the details in the murals. So that's um, two of our big things. And the last thing that we do um, is we do offer public tours and that's what Andrew and Cindy and Turnstiles helping us to do better. Um, we run public and private tours. Um, we do things like today where we um, go out and make public presentations. We do educational outreach, just really trying to realize um, Jagar's vision, which he 
wanted these murals to be for everyone, not just for the congregation. And, um, but he wanted their story to be told and he wanted it to be there for forever. So that's our goal is to make sure that they're here forever. Um, yeah, so um, I just wanted to ask you a couple things, which is, you know, about how people can connect uh, with the Vonka Mural. So you said that people, you, you do tours. Could you tell us a little bit more about the tour program and how, you know, once things are back to normal, people can actually come and visit? Yeah, so we, um, we do do public tours every Saturdays, at ele Saturday 11 and 1230. Uh, people, can't, am I... Okay, people can, um, people can make advance reservations on our website, which is um, vonkamurals.org. Uh, we also do private tours, so people can arrange for groups to come and be part of the, um, come in and come on a time that's convenient for them, and we run those tours. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's, uh, right now the church, as I said, is active, but um, there's a lot of flexibility and we have a lot of opportunity for our docents. We have trained docents who do at least an hour to an hour, 15 minute tour. Some like to really talk a long time, um, but um, they are, um, they are some members of the church, members of the community, art historians, people who are interested in the history of the murals. And um, uh, so they are all volunteers though and help to make our uh, tours possible. Uh, and how are some of the ways people can get connected now, even if they're not in Pittsburgh? The website is the most complete resource that we have right now that's um, accessible to people. So vonkamurals.org. Um, we also are doing um, some at-home activities for people associated with the murals. So um, there'll be some all ages opportunities to, to click on. You can get on us, uh, you can connect with us on Instagram. You can connect uh, and we're Save Moxovanka on Instagram. Um, on Facebook, uh, it's just Vonka Murals, but you'll find us the Society to Preserve. You got to go through that long name uh, <laughs> to a certain extent. Um, but if you look up Vonka Murals on Facebook, you'll find us. And I think Cindy will be doing um, connections uh, or sending out some information about that. But um, we're, and you can support us. I mean, we are, uh, we, our donations are what makes our work possible. We are about 50% supported by foundations and other folks like that, but 50% of what's, um, you know, it's been a very, we've probably put about $800,000 into the church so far between lighting and restoration. Half of that's come from individuals supporting our work. And, you know, for so many nonprofits, spring is the season for galas and fundraising and everything so obviously that that isn't happening um so what are some of the ways that you're trying to connect with people and uh you know because you were you're supposed to have your big gala uh on sure. april 24th so so how are you adapting to that yes we were our, our annual cocktails and conservation uh, was coming up on the 24th which has obviously been postponed to november we are hoping to do some um zoom programs like this um, possibly in conjunction with a meal uh, locally, but you could also join, um, you know, from outside of Pittsburgh to have maybe cocktails and concert and conversation. So we can have a little bit of conversation about um, what I said was so many ways to look at the murals, so many things to talk about, both the themes that are in the murals, but also um, the conservation, the lighting, um, you know, this Vonka collection that we have now, we'll be trying to create some online programming for people to plug into. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, one thing I just want to emphasize for people is that, um, you know, obviously these murals have been around now for, you know, 80 years, but they've never been seen by anyone like they're, like they're seen today. Right. So, and that's really the work of, uh, of your organization to, to bring this just incredible artwork really back to life and, and to a new audience. So that, that's something that's, that's really, really commendable and, and, and really amazing. So um, I just want to encourage everyone, if, if you're in Pittsburgh uh, and have the opportunity to go and visit, you should absolutely 100% take it because I think it's, it's just, it's unlike any church, but I, I think it's really unlike any other cultural institution um, in, in Pittsburgh or in, in most cities, frankly. So you can really tell some unique stories there that 
Um, a well, that's, what, that's one thing I would say is that I've been looking at these murals for 10 years and I still see something new um, every time I go in. And I think it sometimes it really just, just depends on what's going on at the time and what's in my mind at the time. You know, it could be something that's going on in society. It could be something political or whatever. I can go in and I can find relevance um, on the walls. And I think that's Vanka's genius and really Father Jagar's vision that um, this would be happening today. We, we often say if there was a spare few feet on the wall, what would Vanka paint if he came back into the church in 2020? Um, so if we think he was pretty bold in 1937 and 1941, can only imagine what he'd be painting right now in 2020. Yeah, yeah. Well, wow. So, and is there anything else you want to share with us uh, b before we go? Because we're just about out of time. No, just uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, to introduce uh, people to the Vanka murals. And as Andrew said, please look us up if you come to Pittsburgh and, and keep in touch on the website. Uh, and you can sign up for our newsletter and find out what's happening. And, and we'll make ways for you to engage outside of Pittsburgh. Great. All right, Anna. Well, thank you. Wow. Thank you so much for joining us. I also want to give a special shout out to one of our uh, attendees today, which is Miriam Bader, uh, who's a close friend of ours, but she's also our colleague who's been working uh, on this interpretive plan project that uh, we at, at Turnstile Studio uh, have been doing uh, with the, uh, the Vanka murals. So thanks so much for, for joining us today, Miriam, and it's been such a pleasure to work with you uh, on, this, on this project. Um, so hope everybody has, has a great Monday, um, and uh, let us know if you have any questions. Um, if we didn't quite get to them today uh, in the chat in our conversation, uh, you can always find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, or you can also um, please uh, send us an email and we're, we're happy to connect. So, so thank you so much, everybody, uh, and, and enjoy the rest of your day.